Let's get rolling. I want to thank Sean Brandt and the audit team for bringing us another live CRO teardown event. And I want to thank everyone that tuned in today. We had over 70 registered guests for this event, our largest yet. And uh, so we're going to continue to do these events on a monthly basis as long as you all keep showing up. And our next live CRO teardown will be February 15th. And then we have another one in March on March 23rd. We also have an email teardown Wednesday with Spellbound. You can sign up for all of our events at lu.ma slash Replo. I'll, I'll drop that in the chat in a minute here. And so just a quick intro on Replo before I hand it over to Sean and the team to begin. So Replo empowers brands and agencies to create beautiful pixel perfect landing pages on Shopify without developers. It was light years ahead of other page builders for customizability and page speed and used by a ton of Shopify and Shopify plus brands and agencies. Replo's template library has hundreds of proven landing pages and sections that anyone can use as well as certified experts that help build brand new landing pages in just a few days. Uh, again, I want to thank Sean and the audit team and everyone that showed up today. And I'll hand it over to you guys now. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Jess. I don't know if everyone's familiar with audit, but we do what we call brand for CRO. So unlike traditional CRO where you're going in, or at least the agency's going in and doing a bunch of A-B tests for you implementing the winner, we go in and kind of do UX teardowns based on our experience, partnerships with CRO agencies, and then also just best practices. And so kind of a somewhere in the middle of a design firm and a CRO agency. And our output is a robust report that gives you a before and after teardown of the website and gives your team a bunch of actionable tests to run and things to, to consider when looking at the website experience. Like Justin said, I'll try and get through as many as we can here. There's a lot of submissions already, so I'm just going to jump right in. Is the, whoever said mini producer, are they on the call? Actually, Sean, before we jump in, we've got one that requested beforehand. So we're just going to start with this one right here. And Girl. just so everyone knows, usually how this works is we'll ask you to give a little context for the brand. Uh, so we'll save a couple of minutes and then Sean will spend five, six minutes going through and we'll try and get through as many as you can. But that Puro Lab, Sean, uh, is from Adam. Uh, Adam, if you want to give just a little back, that'd be great. A screen share too, sorry. Yep, perfect. Adam, are you on the call? It's okay if you're not. All right, and we'll just dive in. Cool. I'm so sorry, I'm just seeing this for the first time, so I'm just going to scroll very quickly. One thing right off the bat, like I like the flow of information here. I think show product, clearly defining the product is really critical. I like to split tag headlines like this, where you're giving almost like a marketing tag versus something more descriptive. A lot of the times people get to this section when they load your page and they're just instantly scrolling, moving into the next thing. They're not necessarily digesting at all. So when you lead with a marketing tag like this, and then the key information that's really describing what you sell is below it, that can get missed. Not saying there's a right or wrong answer. It's just something to test. The other comment I'll make here is on that action at the bottom. It's just not clear. I say I'm a new customer. I've landed here. I don't know if Puro Labs makes 85 different no natural supplements. I don't know if they just make vitamin C. And that's not saying the image needs to change necessarily, but the shop now description doesn't tell me if one, I'm shopping this vice shown in here, or I'm clicking through to shop all. Am I going to the best sellers? Am I going to new arrivals? Let's just click it and see. So yeah, it's going to all products, which, you know, in this case is misleading because what I'm looking at is the vitamin C. So long-winded saying, long-winded way of saying, be just, be clear in your actions. It doesn't necessarily mean they need to be really long titles. If that said shop all, it'd be much more descriptive. If that said shop vitamin C or shop natural supplements, it could be a little more clear than just shop now. Sorry, just reading. Same thing here. Just tell them where they're going. And e even at this, to this point, I still don't know if I'm going through the homepage, how robust your catalog is. And even when I get here, I write, like I said, sellers, and I can probably go through, I'm guessing five or six, but I still don't know how many you have. So it could be as simple as adding that to this label down here, like shop 20 plus supplement, right? That gives me an idea of how many, how robust the catalog is and what I can expect. This actually looks good. Love this little action to shop the product that they're talking about. Yeah, so 
this is all great content. I think one thing I would push on homepages for everyone on the call is if you're going to feature your brand or a story of the founder or anything like this, where you're like, it's more secondary content. And when I say secondary, I mean, it's not, Hey, here's our product. Those being the primary goals of getting people to a product page. One, try and avoid paragraph text. Like most of it, this is all very valuable information, but a lot of it could be put into some nice check boxes or check marks or like a bullet list. And then second, you always want to leave these actions as secondary. So this section, you, know, you deserve to thrive. We're seeing real customers. We're describing what makes the products great as a catalog, not a single product. And so let's make the primary action to get them to shop product. And then a secondary action to let the actual science behind it. You've got them excited about the products or are not necessarily excited, but you've got them more information here. So don't just push them to the science page, push them, give them multiple actions in this case, push them to products. Let's say it's shop all or best sellers, for instance, and then a secondary action to shop behind the science. I'm just going to very quickly jump to a product page. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to cure it. I would test not allowing add to cart here and only driving them to the product page. It gives you a lot, just giving them less decisions to make here. You want to just get them to that product page because we see higher conversion when the add to cart is from there instead of homepage or collection page. All right, Tom, let's go to the next one. Sorry, that was, that might've been too long for one. No, you're good. We can go to uh, Numa. Numa, Justin just dropped it in the chat there. I think Matt is on the call. Matt, if you want to give a little context, that'd be great. Drink Numa. Absolutely. We, we've chatted with Sean before about website and PDPs, but this is should be a landing page, actually. Here, I'll see you right now, Sean. Send it right here. Yeah, so this is the new landing page that we just built this past couple of weeks on Replo. And this is going to be a Google ads driven category keyword page. Cool. Sorry, I'm just reading first. I love like getting into calling out traditional sports drinks, focusing on that. I think there's there could be a way here instead of showing some images to just state the product not product sorry yeah some of the more high quality organic ingredients that you're using maybe it's as simple as adding little like labels to these or instead of saying chock full of and then list some ingredients maybe could be an interesting way to approach that low sugar high electrolyte formula On this add to, sorry, this like product feature here, I would test starting with a an image with description. This is a great, like the image is beautiful. The rendering is beautiful, but it is an opportunity to communicate more. And they've already seen the packaging multiple times as they get through here. So this is a lot of like screen space that could communicate a little bit more. So maybe test lead off with that one. You're showing two different flavors. You're showing... All these key traits that maybe they're going to digest here instead of reading all of this, or even this one, right? Giving results, call outs instead of ingredients. In my opinion, it'll probably drive more conversion. 12 pack, 12 99. I would test calling out the price per drink instead of just the $30. So show both, sorry. So show 12 pack, dollars And then in brackets, maybe it's like whatever that is, 240 a drink or something like that. Um, this is one of those products that is heavy. If I'm buying a 12 pack of sports drinks, like it's heavy, there is that fear of what the heck is shipping going to cost on it. I don't know if you have a free shipping offer. You may not, but at least showing the user, maybe if there's a barrier or something to do with the shipping costs or format that can help them add to cart a little with a little less stress could be helpful down here. Just a thought. Maybe it's split into like 100% risk-free and like a middle mark and then something about shipping. One question, is, are, are all of the exact same? Would this be the same for every one of them? It's just different flavors? Yeah, just different flavors for this specific sports drink. Okay. Hmm. 
This is great. One thing to note here that I love in this comparison chart, making it easier for users to scan. Sometimes you'll see comparison charts, they'll be really full, right? So they'll, when I say full, like they'll have 12 items that they're going through and some of them aren't realistic. They're just like putting content in there to have another thing to compare. And I would say, let's say that the NUMA team has 10 things that can compare to Gatorade. In this case, like just like they do, pick the five that are going to stand out the most or that have the higher, the largest difference between the competitor. Don't just show everything. You want people to digest this quickly and just see really quickly, okay, this is better for me or whatever the positioning is. I also love the visuals there. You're not relying on the user to one, read those titles. It's just a really fast cue. All of these bottles are ones that they've seen in the, you know, in the cooler at a gas station or whatever. And they're somewhat familiar with hopefully if they're shopping for sports drinks. So it's, there's just a lot, some really nice, simple visual cues here that help them get through these, this faster. One addition here before I move to the next site, I would add a shop, like a buy now button under this comparison chart. Cool. Thank you for sharing. Thank also, you, Sean. Appreciate it. If, if anyone on the call has questions about something I'm saying or doesn't agree with it, for that matter, feel free to speak up. It doesn't need to be just me talking. I'm happy to discuss things or explain, provide some rationale or justification. Cool. The next one we'll go to, Sean, is a mini producer. Just toss that in there. And if anyone from mini producer wants to give a little bit of context, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so I'm mini producer and I'm a music producer, so I sell beats online to recording artists and I have been since 2014. So cool. that's primarily where artists go. And something I want to get your insight on is I have a deal, obviously my pick five beats for a hundred, but the main basis is that it comes with unlimited rights and the stems and the stems typically help like a recording artist be able to like customize the song they want you but i haven't really figured out a way to say all that without putting a whole bunch of text so start off with that yeah no that's a great question also i see i recognize you instantly in that logo yeah. nice rendition i think the key thing there is how much information does the user need to purchase something i think when it comes right. to these specific you know i've never tried to sell music online or beats but i think the main thing that they're going to want to see here is obviously listen to it. That's number one, right? They're going to want right. to hear it before they buy it. So just starting there, I would say that the key information, like top level thing that needs to be communicated is listening to it, right? And right, right now you show the logo, the name, and then who made it, I'm guessing, or sorry, the music. And then there's yeah, the sure. Yeah, so it's got the name of the beat and then... When you press the add to cart, you're going to see what files come with the B, the terms, like quick terms. And that's just within the embedded player itself yeah. for the platform that I use. So all of that comes within it. It's okay. So I, the one thing I would do, I'll just start at the top just so we can get back to it. So there's a massive amount of white space here on mobile. So first thing I would do is just cut that down a bit. That descriptive text you're talking about, it sounds like it's pretty critical to that conversion. So I would lead off with this all beats come with unlimited rights then okay. i would go to, then i would go to this sale offer right like right now it feels like this is an offer and this is your headline it's the opposite so i would probably style this and you know, or change the here to be like one here's where you are you're at all my all the beats so just write all beats then i would find a way to call out that offer really loudly i think the one thing that you really have to read this a few times to get it. I would just pick any five beats for buy five beats and save six and get 60% off, like save one fifth, like make it just as clear and simple as possible. And then when you get down to here, again, think through the main things people want when they're looking at this. I don't want them necessarily having access to share this right now. The goal is to get them to convert. I would have a play button. And I would ha maybe have a plus sign here that accordions it open so they can see the details really quickly and easily. That's um, for the player itself. Like I can't personally customize 
the player, but I will have to see if I can at least take off the share feature to see, because that's kind of the downside to like when you're selling beats online, there's only so much customization you can do with these players. I don't even know if that's something that can be taken off, honestly, with the share feature. Yeah. The other thing you can do on mobile too, to create more space here is just the, all the logos on these are the same. So just, just hide it. There's no need to show it. Anytime you're repeating information, that's un, like, it's not adding any value to the sale. Just hide. It's just an added clutter. That's just convoluting the experience. So if I'm want... not able to hide the logo, I know I keep saying like all these things, it's just because of the platform. Yeah. If I'm not able to hide the logo, what could I replace that image with? Because you have to upload an image. So what could I upload as an image? I guess that's not necessarily my logo. Yeah, I think a lot of artists do this really well on Spotify. I don't have album artwork or making playlists. I think there's a ton of opportunity to just add something else to the creative process there. If it was me, I would go on a site like Unsplash, which is free stock photography and a lot of great, great. ones, mm -hmm. and just start, just pick a photo for each song that you feel pairs with that. Something that makes each one feel unique, because right okay. now these feel very similar. Okay. And I think finding ways to make them stand out in a list format like this could be really helpful. Okay. Okay. And just a last question, because I don't want to take up all the time. So to say... For my, what I have is my headline. You said you would put the all beats come with unlimited rights part. What can I add the stems to? Because those are like the two main things that differentiate in that space. It's like that all of my beats come with unlimited rights and stems, which you typically don't get if you're like purchasing them from other producers. Yeah, I would, if, if those are the two kind of key things that help hand out, I would definitely have some nice little check boxes or put them in a list and just have those right at the top so that users see them right when they land there. And you have the space already that's not being used, so you might as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, thanks for sharing. Good luck. Thank you, have a good one. You too. Next one, Sean, is uh, Jibby Coffee, and I think James is on the call. Uh, James, if you want to give a little context. Hey, howdy, guys. Yeah, we're about to start D to C ad spend for the first time have been primarily retail focused. So ads are going to start up in two weeks and it'll be the first time sending paid traffic here. Cool. Very cool. Give me one sec. I actually did a quick win for you guys. Uh, I know. <laughs> it was great. That's what got me here, too. Awesome. So are all the coffees. Sorry. Mocha latte, mocha latte, cold brew coffee, cold brew coffee. Just in. Sorry, I'm just digesting quickly here. Are these being bought in six packs? Like, what's it? Twelve packs, six? twenty-four packs. It's we actually just removed six to try to increase AOV, but I took six packs off. I would say the one thing about these product cards, and this applies to any product, especially when they're you're selling them in bulk, but when the when the user's looking at this image, they're seeing it in a singular format, right? Which is nothing wrong with that. I think you probably want them to see the product on its own, but mm. they're seeing one product or two products in a lot of these cases for these images. And then the price you're seeing is really high. Now, most customers are going to realize, obviously, that that's not $60 for a can. But I think it's better to make that visual pair more with that pricing. So I would test saying from six bucks a can or from six bucks per coffee. Um, or mm -hmm. Latte is always more expensive than coffee. So use the word latte. But like test showing pricing differently here. I think you'll see a higher click through. There's also a lot of padding on the either side of this copy, which makes it hard for these lines to run the proper length. Length, sorry. And then in this one where you have everything, you've got the two line title plus the reviews plus the pricing. Everything is styled the same, and so it just, it almost feels like a paragraph of text when really it's four different pieces of information. So there's no right answer. Like which one should be bold? Which one should be italic? Which one should be lighter? The goal is create contrast between the different elements. If you were to just pull these out into a spreadsheet, for instance, with your team, 
figure out which one's most important. It's probably the title, right? Because maybe someone's dairy free, so they're interested in oat milk. So the title is what is going to be maybe a little larger or a little bit heavier weight. The stars, you have more than enough room there for those stars and the reviews to be side by side. So that can be one element instead of two. And then the price, you want it to just look a little different than the title. So they don't, again, so the reviews copy the price and the title don't just blend together. You want it to be easy to scan and you want it to be, if they only see one thing, they see your number one thing, which is title. If they only see two things, create that hierarchy for them. It's all really simple stuff, but it'll make a huge difference when it comes to click-through rate. Cool. These look good. One thing I would say on here, and this works for some brands and it doesn't for some brands, but across your homepage, all the photography is beautiful, although I don't think there's any renderings, but like everything looks great, right? It's visually appealing. The brand is all on point and they're kind of aligned. It all makes sense. But when I get down to the social, it's just more of your perception of the brand, right? Like it's the same images that I saw off the page in different formats. There's one, what could be a customer photo here, but what I'm getting at is this section should be completely focused on your consumer's perspective of the product. If we're looking at these six photos, these three shouldn't be here, in my opinion. This section should be completely focused on customer image. And to even go further, I would say don't even use your Instagram. Just use photos tagged that tag you on Instagram, sorry. So solely customer images. You want to humanize it. And there's so many brands popping up in the RTD space, whether it's coffee, CBD, whatever. And so there just needs to be like the trust factor that you can build with a customer by showing them, hey, we're not just online and selling a brand that's been around for a, a day. Like we're in this store, like that's a powerful right there. Like it's among other brands that are recognizable, it builds trust with the customer. So like you want that to be featured, not just more studio images. Does that make sense? That's an awesome tip. I love that. Yeah. Okay. We're going to move to the next one because I'm going kind of slow. For, sure. Thanks for sharing. Cool. Thanks, John. Next one is kind root. And I believe Alyssa is on the call. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. So we make lozenges with different vitamins and plants in them. And I'm actually in the process of changing this around. We are narrowing down our product portfolio. So this is very much great time. I guess my biggest thing is that because we have different functions, uh, potentially each one of them is for a different consumer, right? Somebody looking for sleep versus mood versus yeah. like immunity. And that I guess is like always the hardest part on the landing page is like, how do you explain what you offer when they're possibly different things? I think that's the biggest struggle for me. Wrap this all up. On which page, sorry, on the home or on the Like platform? on this, on the home page. Yeah. It's, you know, you want to sell them on the flavor, but then also on the overall thing. That's, that's been the hardest struggle for us. Yeah. And I think when it comes to product positioning stuff like that, it's, I like to do the same exercise that I commented on with the design hierarchy. Like I think in this case, the anything flavor is really hard to like for someone to to visualize in the shopping experience sure yeah maybe they see banana and they're like oh i hate banana but the benefits of these like focus sleep mood like those are much easier to understand like i can take a lozenge before better or i can take a lozenge before bed and sleep better so i would say that and that's what i meant sorry i call them flavors but i meant like the oh the, okay the sorry flavors. yeah i apologize <laughs> sorry i thought you meant they were also different no, no. I apologize. Okay. Yeah, that's what I meant. It's like each of the functionals rather than okay. okay. that. Understood. Thank you for clarifying. So very first thing here, I think what I, the very first question I had when I landed here and I can see it poking out here. So it helps, but like these are just in a bag. If you were to look at a heat map of any direct to consumer site after section one, the percentage of people that see it go down. So no matter how great that intro is that's drawing people in, let's say 100 people land on your site today, maybe 80 are only getting to that second section. So the first comment is make sure they see the actual product in the header. It, I see the word lozenge and there's so many different formats of what that can look like and people have different preferences with that. So is it, are they in these bags in a little twist wrap, right? Like that matters for someone who cares about packaging and waste. Are they a, like a fisherman's friend style or are they a lozenge like a Ricola or Ricola, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. it. You see it here, but I guess I'm saying like, just show a few kind of maybe on the ground in front of these to give the like instant communication of, 
here's the packaging, here's the product. There's nothing to really even think about. They wouldn't even need to read the headline if they don't. That would be the first thing I would, in terms of helping them pick between these, I'm just going to scroll down here and see how you present products. I think what I, like if I was auditing this page, I would probably add a section at the top here, like right here that just says, pick my need or whatever word you use for the results. So glowing, focusing, snoozing, mood, mm -hmm. and just let them, don't even show the product. Like just show, what are you looking for? Better sleep, mm -hmm. happier mood, more focus, and just remove them having to understand what the product is and the difference between them all. And just show them that number one kind of primary positioning that you're going for and let them pick by that. So they pick sleep, then they go to a product page for the, the snooze ones, but they, it's more of, you know, imagine like a carousel of four certain mm -hmm. has sleeping, someone at their desk with yeah. headphones on focus, try and position them and get them to the product page based on those results versus the product itself. Does that make sense? Yep. I think that's a valuable test to run. Adaptogens. This is a no, no right here. You're bringing them in. And if they get past that section, the very first thing you're doing is taking them to a page that doesn't convert them. Right. So they're going to have to learn more about and do a bunch of reading. And there's not even a link here to shop. Let's say people, your average user hits two pages. You just burned 50% of them by putting them to the story page first. Very similar to my comment earlier. If you're going to do this, if this is so critical, they need to understand this. Just make the story, the secondary action, make a primary action that says pick my blend or pick my flavor or pick my, find my lozenge, whatever. And then the story can be secondary, but you need to be, especially this high in the page, pushing them to something that creates revenue, okay. not something that communicates more about the company. Again, it really depends on the product category, but in this case, I don't think that story is, is, is any more important than the information you already have surfaced here. That makes mm -hmm. sense. I would put these in rows of two. There's not enough information here. There's certain products where the product is so robust, like maybe it's a really intricate tech product, you know, think like a Peloton, right? I'm spending $3,000 on a subscription. It's really robust. Put in, in mobile, like they have their whole frame for one product. It totally makes sense. There's a ton of things they need to communicate there to get someone to the product page. Yours don't have that much to communicate in a, and that's a good thing. So it's better to just be able to see these four products stacked in rows of two, so they can just easily compare and pick which one they need. Okay. I'm just going to very, we haven't, I've done all homepage, so I'm just going to very quickly go here. Oh, excuse me. I like how you've positioned the, excuse me, the quantity selector here. I think the one thing missing here that's probably very critical is you make a really big assumption that the user knows how many lozenges are in a bag. I think retail, you know, anyone that still goes out to retail, you know, knows that the packaging is almost zero relevance to what's in the bag. Sometimes it's 90% air, sometimes it's 10% air. And so just showing this packaging like this, it makes it really hard to understand how, what's in there. And I can scroll down and find it, but I kind of got a hunt. And mm -hmm. Asking someone to spend more money with you just based on how many bags they get is really hard. The other thing that makes it hard is the image, if they weren't to scroll, give me any context or size reference. So I've got a bag of lozenges here. They make, excuse the reference, but think of like a drug dealer, little like bag, like they, these things come that small, right? Mm -hmm. Two by three inches. And these bags come in Costco size, which 12 by eight inches. So like without unless someone really understands those ingredient size references mm -hmm. you're giving, they have no idea how many are in here and how big this bag is. So asking them to just add to cart, it's just not going to happen. They're going to scroll past your add to cart before they're willing to, because they don't know what they're getting. And that's a bad thing because if you were to communicate the volume properly, you're going to see a way higher click through to here. Okay. Yeah. The other thing I would say is same comment as the homepage. These ingredients are great to show, but maybe on this side, show the lozenge. Even if you Photoshop, like you've obviously been done already, like it doesn't need to be anything perfect. It just, mm -hmm. again, it's, if I was to see a lozenge here, maybe I'm just out to lunch, but I don't know these ingredients. I don't, I can't imagine what that ingredients size is in real life, but I know what a lozenge it's not, as long as it's not for a horse, they're all kind of similar size. So it yeah. gives me a, 
at least it's a size reference that I can see. The other thing a lot of brands do when it comes to product photography is they'll lead with an image of a hand holding it. That's not to add depth and what it's just strictly to be like, okay, when this person's not a giant, I can get an idea of how big this bag is. Does it sit in their palm? Is it like they're grabbing the side? It gives them an idea of how big that bag is. Yeah, I'm shooting that in, in a week. So that's great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And I'm sure like I, as you go through what my comment was going to be, you probably have all of this stuff. The key is a lot of users aren't going to get there. It's because like I mentioned, at the end of the day, if you communicate that they're buying a bag of X lozenges for a fair price, other users have tried it and they liked it and what it does for you, they're prob there's a good chance they're just going to get here, get that key info and add to cart. And so you want to equip them with everything they need. Obviously, there's that, that user that's going to come here and go through every photo in the gallery, mm -hmm. everything. You've got everything for them. But for the user that does want to just come here and trust the brand and wants to have a quick experience, which is a higher percentage of conversions, give them what they need easily. No, this is super helpful. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Next one, Sean is National Tennis. Uh, Fabio, which we've featured our founders five before. Oh, right. Fabio, uh, any context here? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for showcasing the site. But basically, Functional Tennis was an Instagram account. And we started selling tennis training products. Initially, it was journals. Then moved on to a wooden spoon, which you'll see down there. It's called the Tennis Pointer. But in the middle of last year, we launched the Functional Tennis Sabre. And it's our flagship product. And it's where we're going to drive sales for the foreseeable future. So I still think it needs a lot of work from the product page point of view. It's just a standard empire. I think it's impulse template I'm using I think from out of the sandbox, which is great, but I know it needs some changes. I haven't got around to it. I've been meaning to get onto your services. Hopefully later in a few months we we'll get there, but I just taken anything I can to help. I'm always looking for ideas and especially you guys. I love the newsletter. So I'd love to get some info. Awesome. Well, I love the product. I'm horrible at tennis, but I lived in Miami for a while and I love playing tennis, even though I'm bad at it. So my very first comment is if I landed on this site and I saw that wooden spoon and I'm sitting, I'm looking for tennis stuff, I'm inst instantly just oh, shit. like, and maybe that's because I don't, I'm not like playing tennis every day. Maybe that's a really common thing is to use a smaller racket or a wooden spoon as a training tool. But to me, I instantly am like, I see the size difference. I see it, it instantly makes me intrigued. I think the biggest issue I see here or not issue, but thing I would test is very similar to the comment on the last site. It's not directly clear that this is a different size racket right off the bat. Like if I read on, I understand you're trying to hone in on the sweet spot, but maybe something added to this visual that makes it feel like, okay, this isn't a normal size racket head. It's just smaller. Even the way that that perspective is on it, it makes it tough to tell and that's because i don't play tennis and maybe a tennis player glance here and they're just like oh man this is tiny so take it with a grain of salt but it could be as simple as a ball laying on the ground right here just so you can see how small that head is versus a ball does that make sense yeah i do have images professionally shot with a ball there so we can slot them in pretty quick yeah i think that would be great the other thing i would say here similar to the last site is like they've just landed here they may, maybe they're coming from an ad. Most DTC brands these days, very few are built completely organically. So a lot we, of the traffic. We are, sorry, we are, ahead, we sorry. don't advertise. So sorry, we're the one to few. Oh, amazing. This is still relevant to you, but not as relevant. But I think whenever someone comes to the site and they've discovered you, they want to know that other people use the product. So like you mentioned, maybe this is a new product. Maybe it doesn't have a ton of traction or a ton of like reviews, but some sort of call out up here in this initial section to say, Hey, either maybe here's what someone said, or this pro uses it, or we've had this many great reviews, or it doesn't even need to be for that featured product. It's more just trying to build trust in the brand, right? Whether or not it's this product or another product, it just says to a user, Hey, these guys aren't idiots and they know what they're doing. The products are great or a product that they've done in the past. Maybe it was, um, so anything up here that can just bring in some sort of functional or sorry, some sort of social proof that. Is, is just clear and evident, I think would be helpful. The last thing I'll say here, and then I'm going to go to a product page, going back to that hierarchy of information, if I was to come you know, into the product development room with you guys and ask you what was most important about this product, I would bet my life that it, the most important part of this product is not the name saver. 
And when I look at this section, that's the most highlighted piece of information, right? So when someone's scanning this, mostly what they see is Saber. And as a consumer, or at least someone who's analyzing the site right now, it's almost completely unnecessary. I don't even give a shit about the name of the product. I care about what it does, what it costs, things like that. Point I'm making is functional tennis or sweet spot training tool. Those are your headlines. That's what I want to hit people with. And on the homepage, and that's all they see is the headline. Saber does nothing for them. They need to have something that communicates what you're making and what makes it great. To me, the new sweet spot training tool, that's an amazing headline that's going to draw them in and be like, okay, let me read a little bit more. Okay. Maybe the word Saber isn't even in here. Maybe it's just on the button, right? Maybe this button's wider and it says, buy the Saber training tool now or buy the save by say now maybe that's where the yeah. product title is i get that you've launched a new product so you want it to be clear but you, even on the product like you you have it there as well that's yeah. probably enough but yeah i the main point i'm making is create that hierarchy of information i would say that the benefits of being a sweet spot training tool is probably the headline okay yeah. same thing here all these images where you're showing the head of the racket on its own, I would just toss a ball in there or something that gives me a size reference. I would also just add an image here that just shows it side by side with a kind of your standard everyday tennis racket. That's your best reference point. Definitely be clear and call up, like literally show them side by side, the, the Sabre traditional racket and just label them underneath. Like even say not needed. Like you're just giving them the size reference. Be clear about that. But I think it'll be super helpful. Like that, like that. How many orders do you have that are multiple, more than one? Not a huge amount, but we do get, I'd say like 95% are single orders. We do have a set section where they might order a tennis center together with it, but most of them are one or are one, unfortunately. It's interesting because I, I would have, my guess would have been a little bit more just because it feels like a tool you would buy at a tennis club like as a coach buying multiple, but I totally understandable. Like it's, it's one of those we, things. We find people come back, like we've seen, I've, I've communicated with a lot of customers and their coach, their coach see if they buy it and maybe their friend sees if they buy it, they want to play together. So we've seen a lot of repeat purchases through friends of people who bought it but not many would buy two. Maybe the second time they buy is when they're more likely to buy two or three. I, that, that makes total sense. I think <clears throat> one thing I would test here is in that case, one, test remove, removing the quantity selector and just allowing it in the cart. You want these actions to sit higher in the page. There's a few different things you could do here. There's just every line here is really small and short and yet taking up a ton of vertical space. So Anything you can tweak to pull those actions higher is going to be helpful. So I would test removing it, but I would also test having three actions here side by side. So one, two, three, and make them variants instead of a quantity selector, <clears throat> one saver, two saver, three savers. You know, maybe the one is 150. I'm sure you have bundles somewhere on site. I don't know, but maybe one is 150, two is 250, right? So you're saving 20% or 15%. And then three is a bigger discount. If you can show or offer discounting for bundling and make it really easy in this state, you may see a higher one better AOP, but you'll see more multi-unit sales. I think the other alternate here is you'll see on a lot of tech gadget sites or apparel sites beneath the cart, let's say you're buying a hoodie, it'll have a easy ad box where it's like the hoodie checked and matching pants checked and it's ad both. Mm -hmm. That could be a think in your product category. And because you led with that wooden spoon, I think it makes a ton of sense to upsell the bundle on this page. So below yeah. the add to cart section there, having a panel that said, you know, want the saber and the wooden spoon, you know, buy them together and save what 10% or whatever the discount you're willing to offer is. I think you'll see some conversions there as well, because both products are valuable. And if they landed here, let's say they landed on the homepage, just like I did, they click that button, they landed here. They don't even know you make a wooden spoon. So at this point, they just think you make a functional tennis saver. They don't realize that you have another product at this point. Let's get let's one surface that product Two, give them an option to buy it as a bundle. Okay.
Let's try one more, Thomas. Thanks for sharing, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, let's do a uh, pedal pub. I know everyone, we're, there's a lot more to get to. We're going to do this next month as well. So look out for that. And then I'll send the link again if anyone wants a free audit. But anyone from pedal pub on the call, they can give a little context. Hey, guys. Thanks for doing this. Uh, we offer two hour tours to bars and breweries for up to 15 people. And we're starting our second season in May. So thinking about a redesign. Awesome. The, the very first thing, I'm going to get into mobile here. The very first thing you said in that description that's missing here, and that it's always an interesting exercise when you hear someone elevator pitch something, that two hour slot is a really important piece of information. Some people are want to be on this thing really long. Some people want to be on it for 30 minutes, but either way, I think if I'm going to hit a book now button, I really do want to understand how long it is. Obviously, I'm going to take a wild guess that you have that information and to get in here, you're, you're asking them to take quite a few steps before you tell them how long it is. Let me see. I'm three so steps. Our schedule's in. not up right. But Usually you'd see, be able to pick it and it would say two hours. So I think, but you're assuming that someone's already got their credit card out if they're that far and they still don't know how long it is. I would say in this header, like it needs to be, even if it's like a two hour afternoon, like it needs to be communicated how long it is, long story short to make sure that it's it's super clear and you're going to see way less abandonment at that last stage if there's communication up front it could be as simple as book my 2 hour book my 2 hour tour book my 2 hour party bike That's a question so anytime you're going through the site no matter what the cross section is you always want them hitting a book now button so like Let's say we add a headline here that says, who uses Pedal Pub? You give them four examples here, which is great. Let's give them like, you know, book it for my event. Give them an action. I know you always have it, you know, sticky up here, but this is where their thumbs are. Let's add an action at the end of this section. Same goes for the, these look likes and headings, and there's no like clear action. These should be massive, like full width actions, book an individual seat, book the full bike book the full two hour tour or whatever, just be more communicative on these and more clear. Corporate custom, I'm gonna guess this. Oh. Yeah, so you gotta reach out to book these ones? Yeah. Yeah. So on that, I when you're going on the homepage, and you're doing those, maybe this one is styled differently than these two. And there's two actions. So the first action would be learn more, let's say. And then the second action would be uh, speak with a team member and book kind of thing. Don't make them go to that next stage. If they're real, like explore further, you want to get them on that call and give your pitch. One other thing, especially on mobile, like I'm sure on desktop, there's a lot more visuals because I noticed when I did this, there's a hover state, but just finding more ways. Like this is a really visual, fun event. There's just not enough visuals here. Like these are great text reviews. Let's see people that post on Instagram a video. Let's pull in some more UGC of maybe it's a corporate event or someone that went on their own and joined the a, a different party. Give users some more social proof and other customers that had fun on it. And again, use it as a sales point. So here's some people that loved it. Book yours now. Like always follow up that sales pitch with an action for them to take. That makes sense? Yeah, makes sense. It's great. Cool. Sorry, I'm just going to look here quick. I think this could be good information for the homepage. You could probably simplify it into just like three icons side by side, but it'd be a good section on the homepage to just say it's like, it's really simple. You just, you book your time slot, sign the waiver, go have fun. I think it'd be an interesting, like even there, that's a great place to communicate time span that I was looking for as well. Awesome. Thanks. That's awesome. Yeah, no worry. Thomas, oh, let's do one more. Okay. Let's do Bambi and Birdie. If anyone from Bambi and Birdie is on the call as well, feel free to jump in. Uh, yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. We got you. Yeah, so this is just a sleepwear company. They also do loungewear. But yeah, just looking forward to getting some advice on optimizing the mobile, especially since that's where most of their traffic goes on to. But yeah.
Cool. Thanks. I'm just going to scroll through a bit here just to get an idea. Eight. So this is a great example of kind of that first thing I was mentioning on the very first site we looked at, but using action points as clear communication anchors. So for instance, if I land on this site and I've just discovered it and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to quickly scroll through. I want to be able to have a quick and easy jumping off point. So I might miss certain things. I might skip titles. I might skip the images. So making this action, say shop the collaboration, shop the Sammy and Bambi collab, something that's just clear. Same here, shop bridal wear, shop sleep sacks. These actions could be much more clear. Obviously the headlines stand out here. And if I'm going through the page, like I'm taking a section piece by piece, I'll probably see it anyway, but it means that if they stopped here and do the action, they can just jump right in and they don't, you don't have to assume they're going to read everything. I'm guessing on desktop, these orders are stacked side, but yeah. So one note, this is a super common thing with Shopify. I don't know why they do this, but the default stacking layout is weird. The action should be at the bottom of the section. So it should be image, bridal shop, curated selection, then the shop button. This In this flow, it's weird. It's tough to tell which images for which, which doesn't communicate super great. So I would reorder those. All these actions should be a lot wider as well. Um, I wouldn't have this image on mobile. I would just show the ambassador program call out. I think if you're going to have this here as well, you know, just give them more info here. Like if you want to drive action, don't make discover what the rewards are. Maybe the rewards are really compelling. Pull them in here. What is the checklist of four things that are amazing about that program? Reviews. Same comment as the other. I'm guessing this is your Instagram. Yeah. Pull in real families, real children, real, and show them in this product on mobile, especially I can't even see the, um, so maybe it's a much more zoomed in. Maybe I'm seeing one and a half at once instead of five and being able to swipe through. I would also test changing this to best sellers instead of new arrivals. Just because you're already featuring the new arrival collection. Sorry, I'm just going to go to a product page here. Everything looks good here. I think the one main comment I would add is we, I would test hiding this and instead forcing the users to get here before it triggers in. So you have to trigger it twice right now. You trigger it here and then they see this one and it's there and then they trigger back in. I don't want them. <clears throat> we see higher conversion when they go through that kind of traditional flow and get all the information. You do a great job in the sticky add to cart of giving them really everything they need. They see the product, they pick their size, they add to bag with price. But I would test that hiding it initially until it, they're past this one. The main thing I would change here though that I would play with is these portrait crop images, so portrait being taller than they are wider, they can be really great on desktop and obviously they're very visually pleasing, but when it comes to mobile, we want other key content to sit high as well. And there's nothing about the product that requires a super tall photo to be communicated. These could have easily been cropped shorter. So maybe these work on desktop, but I would suggest having an alternate image height when it comes to mobile so that users can get to that next section of content faster. And I'm one minute over. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you to the audit team and for everyone that showed up. I learned a lot. I always do from these and I really appreciate it. So thanks again, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, thanks everyone. everyone. Thanks, guys.